Um, as I say, my name's John. I've been in community for a very long time, but um, I knew immediately when I was asked to um, speak for this week what One, two. I knew immediately when I was asked to speak what I would want to talk about because um, it's something the Lord's been saying to me and doing in me um, for a while now, a very long time, in fact. Um, and my theme tonight is the desert. Oh, no, everybody goes. Uh, <laughs> no, don't worry. It'll, it'll be good. But anyway... Um, I've received a wonderful confirmation in our community prayers this week um, that this was the right thing to be talking about because I had just done this picture for my first slide on the talk and I sat in prayers very close to Brother Lorne yesterday morning and Brother Lorne said, I have a picture of sand dunes and somebody walking on the sand dunes searching in the desert and they're longing for God and searching in the desert. So there you go. That's the confirmation that hopefully, hopefully this is a message for all of you. So, for the benefit of those who might not have been um, here uh, for the whole week or listened to the previous talks, we've been following the theme about thirst and the woman at the well and Jesus meeting that woman. And I thought Allegra explained beautifully last night about how Jesus used the fact that she could give him some water as a way of um, connecting with her and that his, his, he was the one who was thirsty, not just for water, because he was thirsty, um, um, but he was thirsty for her love. And that I thought she put that beautifully. And the night before, if you remember, Jamie had invited us to go into quiet and to really seek the Lord ourselves. So I really feel there's been a, a flow over the previous two evenings. And I very much hope my, my little talk on desert times in our Christian lives will follow on from that. Because my testimony is that the Lord has answered my thirst for him. And I hope in some way that I've responded a little to his call. Um, I've definitely got an L plate on my back. But um, I know that he's brought such a lot of healing um, in my life and taught me to continue to thirst, to continue to search, to continue to find him, even in the desert times. Um, and so the, my proposition tonight is a little bit of a, a mini talk on the desert and what the Bible teaches us about desert times when we thirst perhaps a bit more than usual. And then I'm going to do a little bit of a testimony with some funny photos of me. Um, some of you have seen these photos. I do apologize to Marketa and Bar and Marushka and Ilish. Um, Ilish, you haven't seen them actually. So anyway, that's, that's irrelevant. Some of you have seen these funny photos of me, but they're part, the, the point is not just for me to show you funny photos of me. The point is to tell you that I have a real life uh, where I've been very up and down. I'm a very weak person. Um, I'm a very emotional person. I may not look like it. And I'm a full-time full software engineer, and my job is 35 hours a week to solve complex logical problems. But all of that is kind of a layer over the fact that I'm actually quite a broken person, as many people in community could freely tell you <laughs> from various th things that have happened in the past, including a couple of breakdowns since I joined community. Um, I, I joke about it now, but at the time it wasn't funny. Um, but so if you are in a place of need um, and in a place where you wonder if it's actually going to work out for you, whether you can actually search and find God, um, then I'm telling you from my experience that you can. And I'm going to give some clues from the Bible first, then a mini testimony, and then a little reflection at the end um, on the Song of Songs. Um, and then I believe we're going to, into an all-night vigil, and so I will hand over to some other people at that point to take us into the vigil. So, mini Bible teaching, mini testimony, reflection on the Song of Songs, and we go into silence to seek the one I'm talking about. 
because this is not a maths lesson. This is not a religious education lesson. I hope to draw you in your own thirsting and longing for God. So here we go. Is that okay? Does that sound all right? Are people falling asleep? Um, no? Are you everyone awake? Good. Okay, let's go for it. So the Song of Songs is a love poem. It happens to be in the Bible, um, but it's a love letter to us. Guy sang a wonderful prophecy about the Lord loving us and calling us. We're his bride. So blokes here, we're his bride too. So, yeah, so I'm his bride. So um, sometimes it's a bit hard for me to imagine that. But, um, but we're all his bride. And uh, that was what was coming through the worship for me. But the Song of Songs is one of the clearest calls of love from Jesus to us in the Bible. Happens to be in the Old Testament, but that doesn't matter. It's the same Holy Spirit talking to us. So I'm going to do a meditation on the Song of Songs later. So remember this starting point, okay? I will search for the one whom my heart loves. So I want tonight to read some verses, give a little testimony to encourage us about how the Bible encourages us to use desert times more than other times to search for the Lord. Because that's been my experience. It says in Hosea, I will win her back once again, meaning your soul, my soul, the whole church. I will win her back once again. I will lead her into the desert and speak tenderly to her there. So there are actually times where God will draw us into loneliness, to solitude. Actually, I want to use the word solitude, to being alone. He will draw us into times where we depend on him more than usual. It doesn't kind of happen by accident. Times when you're alone and you have to depend on God more may actually not just be an accident. They may be things that God uses to teach us how to lean on him more. So I want to begin with a, a practical analogy. So um, have you ever got to the end of the day and you've got a headache and you're wondering why you've got a headache and okay sometimes headaches just happen but sometimes with me anyway i get a headache because i realize can you guess what i haven't drunk any water all day okay so i then go and drink some water and it's okay but i forget day after day and sometimes two or three days in a row i don't drink enough and by the end of the day i'm out i've got my headache so i think the, the process of waking up to God is a bit of like coming to your senses, okay? So that moment where you recognize, whoops, I've got a headache, something's going wrong, and you realize, why, is actually what I want to draw us into. Because I think I certainly spend half my life with a spiritual headache because I'm not drinking enough, and I, and I need to be drawn more and more to drinking Every day, in fact, every moment, St. Paul says, pray without ceasing. Is this possible? I hear some of you saying inside yourselves. It is possible. The Bible encourages us and enables us to do it. Now, the one thing we can't do is when we get this headache and we think, okay, I haven't been drinking enough water, is then decide, right, I'm going to binge drink now, enough for the next seven days. <laughs> So, you know, kind of, I'm going to go over the top and drink so much that it's going to actually last me a week. Which may be what sometimes we do with the Holy Mass and going to church. We kind of binge God enough to last us for seven days. Or, you know, you wouldn't do that with eating, would you? You wouldn't do that with eating. I know I'll eat this Sunday enough so I don't have to eat Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You wouldn't do it with breathing. You know, I'm going to binge breathe enough so I don't, I, don't, I don't have to breathe for the next three days, okay? Um, but the spiritual life is like oxygen. It's like water. It's like food. In fact, have you noticed in the Bible all the things that we need all the time are used as symbols of the, the spiritual life? Air, breath, the Holy Spirit. Spirit is actually the same word as breath. 
Um, the Holy Spirit we need all the time. We need living water all the time. We need living bread all the time. So all the things that we can't binge for a, a month or a year or a week um, um, are, are things that we're encouraged to, to long for, to thirst, to be hungry for. You know, all these verbs and these words are used in the Word of God for a reason, which is the Bible is trying to teach us from beginning to end. that we need God not just every day, not just every hour, but every moment. And it's that thirst... That longing that I'm trying to inspire us all to, okay? And it's a good thirst. It's a good hunger. So some of the themes in Scripture that I want to dig out will hopefully reassure you if you're sat there thinking, well, I'm one of the people who tries to binge every seven days and make it last. Or if you're sat there thinking, I'm binging on... <laughs> on Gateway, enough for the next year. You don't have to. You don't have to. It won't work anyway, as Father Pedro said. Um, it won't work. It's not necessary. God will be with you. God will inspire you to thirst and to draw on him every day. He will meet you in the desert. He will accompany you. So let's see the proof in the Bible. Okay, that's all right. Is this all right? Is this going to be useful? So I'm digging out a few scriptures from the Bible on searching. So this is the one I want to come back to at the end. So a little bit of poetry. See how this makes you feel, everybody. Okay, see if this rings any bells in you. The bride is in her room, and she says this. We'll come back to it later at the end. All night long on my bed, I looked for the one my heart loves. I looked for him but did not find him. I will get up now and go about the city, through its streets and squares. I will search for the one my heart loves. So I looked for him, but I did not find him. That's not the end of the story. The watchmen found me as they made their rounds in the city. Have you seen the one my heart loves? Scarcely had I passed them than I found the one my heart loves. I held him and I would not let him go till I had brought him to my mother's house to the room of the one who conceives me. So intimate, romantic, um, very human, very emotional, very relational stuff in the Bible. The Bible is not a boring book, okay? This is wonderful po poetry in the Bible. And this is a beautiful image of God seeking us and us, our response to God. And you can sit with this for an hour a day, a week, a month, and uh, just hear the call and hear the response of the bride. Um, there are some very interesting things in here which I'll come back to. But just if I want to kind of dissect things a little bit um, in terms of how you think about your own search um, affects how you search for God. So I just w would like us to encourage you to recognize a few things. This is the way around we usually think of our search for God. I can find in Jesus my heart's deepest desire. So that's where we start. It's a logical starting point. I can seek him even in the desert, and I'm using that as a symbol for the quiet, the space, the emptiness just by myself, or in the city, the busyness in your job. I've been working seven hours doing programming today. Um, and then I think, well, underneath the finding and the seeking, maybe my heart longs for God a little bit. And then I think about my own heart at the end of that kind of thought process. But the Bible actually puts it the other way around. The Bible teaches us, first of all, about the human heart and how it works. It's a bit like spiritual physics. One, my favorite, one of my favorite speakers is Bishop Robert Barron in the States. And he's always talking about spiritual physics. He's interested in what works spiritually. So the Bible teaches us what works and why it works in terms of searching for God. It teaches us first about the heart. And then it teaches us about why the heart longs for God. And then it teaches us about because we have a heart that longs for God, 
Now we can seek him. And then it says that seeking will lead to finding one day. Okay, do you see it's the other way around. We tend to think, well, I ought to be looking for God. So busy, 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 start searching for God. There's, there's the search for me, I've gradually learned, is to comes through awareness of my own heart. So let's carry, I hope this makes sense. I want to pick that out from some scriptures about the desert in the Bible. Jesus, when he was baptized by the Father, amazing experience, zonked by the Holy Spirit, discovered the Father, his relationship with the Father, heard the Father say, you are my son, the beloved, with you I'm well pleased. Immediately, St. Mark says, Jesus was driven into the desert. Okay. Um, and he came back, it says, I'm borrowing this from Luke. From that desert experience, he came back full of the power of the Spirit. So before Jesus did anything dramatic, apart from possibly the wedding at Cana, he needed a time in the desert. He needed a time where he connected with his father. He needed a time storing up relationship with his father. Just him, just his father. There are many, many figures in the Bible that do this. St. Paul in Tarsus, David in the wilderness, Moses in the desert. Before their ministries, they have one-on-one -on -one time with God, where it's a connection, just them. So why this is so special to me is there was a time just after my conversion when I was about 13, don't worry, the photos are coming, um, <laughs> when I went into a long desert period, years as a teenager, um, and I found exactly this, that I needed that one-to-one -one time. Anyway, I'll carry on. The Song of Songs, later on, after the bit we read, says, who is this coming up from the desert, resting on her loved one? We learn with one-on-one -on -one time with God to lean on him. Do you actually believe that you can connect and search and grow in your search with God and find Jesus increasingly without the people around you? I'm challenging, this is quite a, a challenging message tonight. I'm calling you to really search for yourselves. Or do you think that your own search with God is completely dependent on Hod or Father Pedro or Brother Lorne or Sister Agnella or, or Guy or me or whatever? I mean, all of those people would be the first people to tell you, please don't depend on me for your relationship with God. I might help, but you need to search and find God for yourself. Am I right? <laughs> kind of. I know, I know we do, I'm not saying we don't need each other. That's the last thing I want to say. But, yeah. So, our heart is, I'd just like to say, is capable of a wonderful relationship with God. We have the capacity to love God and to walk with him and for it to be a beautiful relationship. I heard a song two weeks ago that talked about blow through the caverns of my soul. St. Teresa of Avila wrote about the, in the interior castle. I read that when I was 14. I probably wasn't ready for it then. But I got this vision of that Jesus can come into me and set up a beautiful palace Okay, it's pretty mucky and dirty in there. Um, but his longing is to live in us, for us to be a temple for him. And our heart is capable of a beautiful relationship with God. So, just continuing into the spiritual physics, I'm just asking you to get out a microscope and look at yourself for a moment with a biblical lens. I'll try not to make this too long. But... The Bible and the Catechism, which I'm checking everything with, by the way, and also I've got a, I've got a handout at the end of some, some thoughts that I'm giving you tonight to follow up later because I realize this is quite a challenging message. So I, you know, there's a handout there of some of these things, and I just showed it to Father Pedro as the resident theologian, and I could have shown it to some other people as well, but just to get make sure that I'm not off track here. Okay, so this is... This is the real thing. So just get out your spiritual microscope and ask if you understand 
how you tick inside spiritually. And the picture I'm going to paint now is a biblical one, hopefully. And um, anyone here who thinks I'm a heretic can speak up. Okay, so hopefully nobody will. But the Bible talks about mainly we have two parts, a body and a soul. Okay. Um, everyone's got a body. Okay. Wave your right hand at me. Okay. Everybody wave your right hand at me. Okay, you've got a body that you're very aware of. If you woke up one morning and your right hand wasn't there, you would be worried. Okay. It's easy to think about bodies and to be grateful for them. When they go wrong, um, it's easy to explain, Father Pedro, I broke my thumb, here it is, feel sorry for me. Um, you know, at that level, it's very easy to, to, to understand, to think how we tick, um, and so on. With the invisible part of us, um, the soul and the spirit, it's harder to recognize sometimes what's going wrong. Um, and problems can happen. Um, so, but the heart is the, ki the center our center, your heart is the center from which you pray, from which you seek God. Your heart is where the caverns of the soul are that the Holy Spirit can come and draw you into relationship with him and draw you into a love story. We all know naturally that a love story is from our hearts. We all long for a love story in our hearts. Okay, the same is true spiritually. That's, this is the language the Bible uses. Prayer is from the heart. Relationship of God is, is from the heart. The reason I say this is there's a lot of other noise going on in our lives. And it's all on a surface layer. Okay, so I'm going to list some of the things. In our body, some of the noise and the cravings and the things that really grab our attention very easily are things to do with health, senses, appetites. Okay, I probably don't need to illustrate that with examples of things that really grab our attention all the time very easily. It's very difficult, for instance, to fast if you haven't done it much because your body just keeps telling you to eat. But things down lower are a bit harder to be aware of and to connect with and a bit harder to understand when they go wrong. So some of the key parts of our soul are memory, understanding, and free will. Okay, And there's a lot of other stuff we have to deal with in that surface layer, which we call our soul. The Greek word is psyche, so you've probably heard psychological and so on. But there's a deep here in our spirits is where God connects with us. So if we spend our whole lives up here, among all the cravings and the appetites and the desires, and in here with the busyness and planning and you know, thinking about our future and so on. All of these things are good. All of them are beautiful. All of them are wonder, wonderful. But they're not meant to be the center of our lives. Do you remember Allegra spoke about all these things, family, relationships, jobs, hobbies, sports, they're all great. But we can't seek them first in our lives. Seek first the kingdom of God, the spiritual part, with all your heart. Jesus said, love me with all your heart. Love me with all your heart. Love, love the Lord your God with all your heart. But his desire is that this is where he sits on the throne. Smack bang in the center. All these other things become beautiful to the extent that this is where we're searching and continually putting Jesus on the throne. So hopefully I've got the theology right. Have I got the theology right? It says in Matthew, seek, seek first the kingdom of God, and all these other things will be given to you as well. So it's not that the search for Jesus means that I can't own a car, I can't get married, I can't have a good job, I can't have fun, I can't do sports. You know what I mean? We don't sacrifice all of these things. But where the life in our souls comes from is from the meeting with God in our hearts. In fact, one of the key verses, think about this from this map of you. This is you, okay? This is your spiritual insights. One of the key verses you've had this week is Jesus said, he who believes in me, out of his 
out of his no out of his heart will flow rivers of living water in fact the word there will flow actually means bubble up it means a spring of living water so down here in the center in the caverns where the holy spirit blows inside you that's where the living water wells up into the surface layer you see what i'm saying the spring comes from the spiritual bit that's center of you where you long for god and it flows out to make the rest of your life fulfilling and joyful because it's ordered by god to the most important thing in your life so does this little microscope of what's going on inside you spiritually help does it help a little bit because it's one of the most important things my spiritual director ever said to me i've been going to see him for seven years but he said john 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 just stop for a moment <laughs> Just stop, okay? Because I've been telling him about problems here, problems there, problems there. Problems there. Oh, dear. The poor man, I don't know how he lasted seven years with me. <laughs> John, he said, this is the surface layer. This is your soul. This is the psyche. This is, it's important. It's part of you, just like your body is, but it's not the most important part. He said, down here, under all of those struggles, under that layer, is a place where you meet with God. And all he ever taught me was to pray and to ask the right questions to keep that spring going. And he saved my life a couple of times. So if you don't believe me, read the catechism. This is quite wordy, but it's got a couple of gems in that I want to dig out. It says in the catechism 2563, the heart is the dwelling place where I am, where I live. I don't mean, this doesn't mean God. This means me. You live in your heart. That's where your awareness, including your spiritual awareness, comes from. The place to which you withdraw in prayer. So when we go into the vigil and the retreat tomorrow, if we're busy <laughs> planning the next five years of our life, um, I'm not saying that, please don't get me wrong. Please, I, I think I got Brother Lorne worried a moment ago when I kind of overemphasizing something. I'm not saying these things aren't important, but they're not the center. So use the space, use the time to listen to your heart, to be aware of your heart and what's actually going on in your heart. It's a really difficult thing I'm asking you to do because sometimes we're actually afraid of what's going on in our hearts. We're actually a little bit afraid, and we're scared to go there. The desert is not always a very comfortable place. But um, we meet, there's a saying, the first person you meet in prayer is not God, it's yourself. Um, and don't be afraid of prayer. Don't be afraid of meeting yourself. It can be a moment of grace. Anyway, sorry. Um, anyway, catechism, back to the story. The heart is the dwelling place where I am, the place to which I withdraw, to which we're withdrawing tonight and tomorrow. We're withdrawing into our hearts. We need to be aware of our hearts. It's our hidden center. Get this, all the clever people out there. Okay, I know there's some really clever people out there. The heart is our hidden center beyond the grasp of reason and of others. So no matter if you get two or three degrees in theology and philosophy and whatever you are into, Intellect is great. It's a marvelous gift from God, but it will not take you all the way. I knew an atheist at college who was studying theology. So don't make faith a mental exercise. Reason is very important. And um, who was it who defined faith, um, the Christian life, as faith-seeking understanding? So reason is really important but it's not the center. The heart is the center, and the brain, your wonderful gifts, whatever you have in that area, will agree. So, but the heart is beyond the grasp of reason. Only the Spirit of God can fathom the human heart and know it fully. So when we were singing earlier, come in me and overflow, Holy Spirit, we were praying for a miracle. We were praying for spiritual life to overflow in us, beyond our understanding. We're praying for something greater than we could ever ask or think. 
Okay? And we ask that every day. Every day we ask for miracles in prayer. Things that we can't manufacture ourselves. So kind of get used to um, operating at that level. The brain is important, but the heart goes beyond. Um, anyway, the, place, the heart is a place of decision, and it's deeper than our psychic drives. Okay, that's it's quite wordy. Sorry for anyone who's struggling with the English. But um, what this means is the heart is a place of decision, and it's deeper than any problems we might be having here. My testimony in a moment is going to be that I had big, big problems emotionally, mentally, with family, with relationships. Just to say that the spirit is at the meeting place with God. There's a beautiful picture in Genesis about where, um, how we're built, how we're made. Um, it says that the Lord God breathed into man. He formed us from the dust of, ground, of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The breath is the same word as spirit. God breathed ruach into us. So don't despair of this picture I've drawn. Don't despair that you will survive seeking God, praying, deciding here, because his Holy Spirit, the breath of Jesus, is breathed into you in your heart. Don't be afraid of going home from Gateway. The Holy Spirit is breathed into you. The Holy Spirit meets you every time you go to Mass, every time you go to confession. The Holy Spirit will stay with you. That's the verse I was quoting. Let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture said, out of the believer's heart, where I'm encouraging you to go tonight, go to your heart, meet God in your heart. Because from there shall flow rivers. The Greek here, the word for heart, is actually from your belly, from your guts. From the very center of you, there will be a river of living water. Put your hope in that. I'm encouraging you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you in the heart. Allegra quoted that last night. And Jeremiah promises, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your brain. No? With all your heart. Okay. With all your strength? No? With all your heart. It's great to seek God with our intellect and our, our will. But we love the Lord first with our heart, all of our hearts. And then the other things follow on. So my desert story. We've reached the testimony, folks. Okay, We've reached the silly pictures. So, but just before I start the story, um, the promise is that I will win her back again. I will lead her into the desert and speak tenderly over her. So this bride of Christ had quite a difficult few years, which I'm about to tell you about. So do you see why I've done the scripture first? And now I'm going to tell you how it was true for me, hopefully to give you some hope. So. This was my experience that in that time, although it was hard, although um, I didn't have much fellowship, I wrote to Andrew for several years, letters every, every month or so, and we would share scriptures. And I just keep, kept searching. I kept looking, it says in Proverbs 2, if you seek for me as for s buried silver, search for me as for buried treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find God. I am the vine, you are the branches. These are all um, scriptures which were really important to me at that time. John 15, in my old Bible, I still got upstairs at home, has lots of underlining in it. These are some of the verses I underlined twice because I had to find this for myself. The young grow tired and weary, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. And coming to the end of my testimony, um, there was one verse in Acts 2 which was really important for me where Jesus said, wait for the Holy Spirit. And... They gathered round him and asked, Lord, at this time you're going to restore the kingdom to, to Israel. He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or dates of the Father set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. 
And I, in my Bible, replaced the word you with the word John, so that it read, he said to them, it's not for John to know the times or dates the Father is set by his own authority, but John will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon him. You will be my witness. Okay, that's a little bit dodgy. Some people called it Bible bingo. Um, but the Lord really spoke to me that time, and um, it's Acts 2-ish. Remember that that's the person that all of this is happening in, okay? So not a very nice top layer, but God is speaking to me. So, and then this is where I came up out of the desert leaning on the beloved because the Holy Spirit hit me like a truck at the age of 21. I still had mass problems, which I don't have time to tell you about. But you can see from that face that something's happened, can't you? And it was in this youth group. Um, where I was baptized in the Spirit when I was at university and changed my life. I was so impacted with healing and, and the love of God that I wanted to share with others and found community shortly afterwards and uh, came for a year off after university and I've never left um, <laughs> and got married and had a kid and a house and mortgage and stuff. So, um, so but... This was, this was huge. So let's just take a moment. So I encourage you just to sit up, stretch, whatever you're going to do, because we're just going to become aware, come back into the room, wake up if you've fallen asleep. <laughs> I've seen some nodding heads. Um, just come back into the room. So all we're going to do now until the vigil, until bed, whatever happens for you after this meeting, all we're going to do now is we're going to look at this verse, those four verses in Song of Songs. Um, so try to be present um, to these verses from your heart. Um, yeah, try not to be distracted. I know distractions come very easily. They do to me all the time. Um, and I just have to try to put them to peacefully to one side, peacefully to one side. Um, but Let's be the bride going in search of the beloved in these verses. Okay, so I will search for the one whom my heart loves. Emphasis on heart. Let's go into a heart search, a being aware of our hearts. Um, before you leave tonight, I've got these handouts. I'll just leave them here. Just pick one of those sheets up, whatever happens afterwards before you go off, um, to, go, to do whatever we're going to do, because this contains this scripture. So take it into the silence. Um, just a reminder, we have hearts that long for God. We seek him and we find him. But it starts with the awareness of the heart. Um, and that's where we decide. And it's deeper Final time I'm going to say this, because it's the most important thing I've heard from Jesus in my life. The heart is deeper than the, the level at which we struggle and we're distracted and we're addicted and where we sin and stuff. The heart where God can dwell in us is deeper than that. Try to go down there. Try to be aware. Try to access that place where the Holy Spirit meets you. So this is the, the verses. And after we read these verses, I'm just going to pick out four things and then we're done so the verses are again all night long on my bed I looked for the one that my heart loves I looked for him but I did not find him I will get up now and go about the city through its streets and squares I will search for the one my heart loves so I looked for him but did not find him the watchmen found me as they made their rounds in the city. Have you seen the one my heart loves? Scarcely had I passed them when I found the one my heart loves. I held him and would not let him go till I had brought him to my mother's house, to the room of the one who conceived me. So near the start of those verses is the heart. Jesus is the one that our heart loves. So maybe the first thing to do into prayer, 
go into silence. Just be quiet. Be aware compassionately of yourself, your surroundings, and then just focus on the one whom your heart loves. If you're just discovering, maybe for the first time on Gateway or recently, that Jesus is the one that you really long for, then just try to be present to that as your starting point. And then look for, in the silence, in whatever you can see, whatever we put there to encourage you, try to look for the one that your heart loves. And then the searching. What is the searching for you? What is the searching for me? There's many ways we search. And my last comment is on these watchmen. When I read these verse, I, I tried to find a commentary on John of the Cross or somebody on this. I couldn't find anything on this. But for me, the watchmen are the distractions or the problems in the surface layers of our life. When we go looking for Jesus, we hit, what's for dinner tomorrow? <laughs> we hit, who am I going to marry? We hit, what am I going to study at university next year? We, we hit, gosh, that's an annoying fly in the corner of the room. Uh, we hit anything, um, but especially the more, the more difficult ones are, the watchman for me is, you're no good. <clears throat> You'll never make the grade. Nobody will ever love you. You couldn't possibly ever get married. Um, the watchmen are the flaws, the breaks in the top layer that stop the search or make the search more difficult. If we can go about the streets and squares, the quiet places, the noisy places, if we can just compassionately, peacefully wait for the Lord and with help, maybe with confession, maybe with fellowship, maybe with professional counseling, which I'm not ashamed to say I've had several times, with whatever help you find, you can get past the watchmen. The watchmen are not God. God is bigger than whatever watchmen are stopping your search for Jesus in the night, in the, in the darkness. The watchmen found me, and we ask them, we dialogue with our own weakness. Your weaknesses, your brokenness is a, is a is a pointer to where God is. It's a meeting place with God. It's very difficult. Sorry, this is a challenging message. I'm just being obedient to what God gave me. But if you can get past those watchmen, those distractions, those things that weigh you down, it's scarcely the moment you pass them, the moment you recognize and your attention returns to Jesus, you can find the one your heart loves. It can take time. I don't know. I hope this has meant something to you. So my story is that I had quite a long time in the desert, thirsting, longing. And I've tried to give you some of the scriptures that made a difference to me. And the end of the story for me and the end of the story for you will be that if you search for the one whom your heart loves, you will find him. You will. Search for him, find him. That's my encouragement, my challenge to you. But uh, thank you, Lord, for this time. And Lord, settle in our hearts what needs to be taken from this meeting. Settle in our hearts. I pray protection. I pray peace upon us um, as we go into peace, uh, into prayer tonight and tomorrow. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.